join that community the way that we're going. I mean, we got to be some really backwater, uh, warring, you know, small culture that, that I, I, you know, the only possibility I could see them being interested in us would be. Voice command. Find place. Walmart. One. Navigate. Toma la salida de la derecha y gira a la izquierda. Either to explore the natural resources or um, for pure curiosity or that we're possibly a threat because otherwise, what value, how could they possibly relate to us? I think they find us pretty quickly. And I think that they find that our spiritual and moral standards are pretty low. And I don't think that that is too encouraging. And I, I really think that they are available, as one of them told to put a parcel of direct, to help you if you want us to. Mm -hmm. And the, the question is whether we want them to or not. Certainly they're advanced in agriculture and uh, medicine and many areas. On one Toma hand, la salida de la derecha y gira a la izquierda. You say aliens would not be interested so, in us. That is true. Why aren't we? Why aren't we cooperating? And you say aliens would not be interested in us because of our low technology. Period. But yet, on the other hand, they are so advanced that they don't need our type of technology. Gira a la izquierda. If that is a true, they would Gira not need our derecha. resources. They would already have zero point energy. There is no such thing as fossil fuels. If we could build a better world, where would be what do you think the answer to that question is, you having been you know, so high in, in government? Well, I think the problem is in the government. This is certainly true of yours. Gira a la derecha. It's really not in control. Mm. But you have what I call in my book, the uh, light at the end of the tunnel, the survival plan for the human species. I call them the cabal. They're really the richest, most powerful people in the world who are basically amoral. Mantente a la derecha durante they don't really tres care millas. About anybody else. All they care about is making money and having power. And they're the same people, they are the people who are running the international financial system, which is nothing but a total fraud. And it's been going on that way for a couple of centuries, and nobody is doing anything about it. In the United States, for example, 99 years ago, the Congress allowed, it passed a bill that handed over the sovereign right of the United States to create its own money to a group of private bankers, the Federal Reserve System. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest swindle in the history of the world, probably. Yeah. And it's still going on. 99 years, and Congress hasn't reversed it. They, they were told right away that the great mistake had been made, but nothing was done about it. And it still hasn't been done, and there's just no reason for this massive unemployment, both in the United States and around the world. There's no reason for people to be starving or not have enough clothes or a uh, roof over their heads. It is just a combination of too much self-centeredness and a monetary system, which makes basically slaves of us all for the benefit of a very, very small handful of exceedingly rich people who don't care about us or about the future of the world either one. Sounds positively primi uh, sounds pri positively medieval. 
so that you know, we haven't advanced any more than where there where there you know where there we're part of the fiefdom you know where there's where there's serfs and uh, you know if that if that's truly the case it's a pretty dismal picture because yeah, um, it's interesting after uh, one of the books I wrote um, <clears throat> quoted somebody who said that after the Civil War that Slatham had that uh, slavery had been uh, abolished in the South but it had moved to Wall Street. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be just as bad or worse, it, and it would affect everybody, which is exactly what it's doing today and all over the world. And we don't have to have these things that are going on in, in Greece and, uh, and Ireland and Spain and all of these places where the IMF comes in and, and puts up a little uh, money, but credit. For these people to pay the bankers the interest on their bonds, and then to tell them how to run their countries, and to have to cut back on services and lay off people and all this kind of thing. This is, as you said, medieval. Yeah. It is primitive in the, in the extreme, and we're putting up with it. And that, that's the really surprising part, because people really are Mantente not making effort to, to do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, if, once you grasp the big picture, I mean, it, it can be really uh, depressing because we don't have a lot of control over those folks. I mean, I think it's really interesting that when they just want on a whim want to raise the profit margins, all of a sudden gasoline goes up. And, you know, for a while, here in the United States, it was almost $4 a gallon, which in the rest of the world they probably were laughing at us because they're paying way more for it. But you know what? It almost as if it conditioned us so that when they dropped it back down to three fifty, so it won't be so painful the next time. It goes to four bucks a gallon. Then it goes to four fifty the next time. That's right. That's exactly right. And you know, and then they almost like pull back because they do feel a ripple from the public, the anger and everything else, but the public doesn't doesn't follow through on it. And it's really un unfortunate, and, and, and it's a sad state of affairs that these that this small group of people, and, and I and I'm I'm inclined to agree with this 100, percent have have so much control. It's a, it's a very small club of travelers, and they they really run the world. We, a few of us have put up a, a website that I would recommend to your listeners. It's called www.victoryfortheworld.net. It's www.victoryfortheworld.net. And if anybody doesn't believe what I'm saying about the monetary system, um, and think some exaggerating, like go, go there and do a couple of things. Get a look. That's one of the, one of, one of the books that are in in California called Web of Debt. You could find that book and read the first hundred pages about how the banking system has evolved. You'd want to throw up. It's just so... You know, it's a maddening, really, that this is allowed to happen. And, my, and I made a speech uh, to the uh, 21st International uh, UFO Congress in uh, Scottsville, Arizona, in February. It was global fraud, global hope. And I would really recommend it to the listeners. And you can download it from that website. And it's sort of a, a crazy of the things that are wrong in the world what we have to do about them. And then the other thing that's on the website are action plans. Milla, toma la salida de la derecha y gira a la derecha. And you can go to the action plan and see what it recommends. And if you like any of the things it recommends, you join the club and do something about it because time is running out. And I don't know if you have noted the increase in floods and storms the last year or two all over the world, mm -hmm. and that we've, we've had storms up here like they've never had before, and then you see them, and, uh, and My name is Marvin Billups, I'm a construction foreman in Northern Manhattan. I take a lot of pride in what I do. I've been a part of Spectrum for 29 years, I've been a part of the union for 29 years. Toma la salida de la derecha y gira a la derecha. In the middle of the night we had to rush into the emergency room, they didn't know what was wrong. Doctor said she chokes on her sleep. We need this machine 
to monitor her when she sleeps. We got the machine. It's something that the union provided through their benefits. She grew up to be a healthy, athletic girl. Our benefits are irreplaceable. Spectrum, you want to provide me with less service. It's going to cost me more. It makes me feel like the time that I've put in, it doesn't matter. If the CEO makes $98 million, what is our contract going to affect him? It's not just about me. It's about a whole group of middle class people. Spectrum, give us a fair contract. I'm very pleased to be on your show. Excellent. Uh, now, I've briefly uh, mentioned a few things about your background here, of course, but I think we should spend some more time on this because I think it's pretty interesting. You have a position as a former Canadian cabinet minister, um, a former minister of national defense, and I kind of, you know, it's always interesting to hear how you come from a position within government going over to, uh, well, being interested in the UFO phenomena and everything that's considered to be kind of on the fringe, I would guess, today. So what's your story, Paul? Well, it's a, a long story, and I'll try to boil it down uh, to a few minutes. But um, I was in the um, in the forces during World War II, and I was a child of the Depression, and I was very um, concerned about the kind of poverty that I saw in that era. Uh, I had a cousin, for example, who later became the best man at my wedding, who was a, an insurance salesman, and he. Uh, when he wore through the bottoms of his shoes, he didn't have enough money to have them resold uh, or half sold. He had to just put cardboard in them to keep the dampness out. And after you see this sort of thing, it has a real effect on your psyche and uh, enters right into your soul. So after the war, I went to university and uh, to get rid of the, to get uh, even with the prime minister for wasting a couple of years of my time. And uh, Economics was the, the subject that really interested me most. And I kept asking my professors if recessions and depressions were necessary, and they could never give me a straight answer. They would say, well, we've always had recessions and depressions, read your economic history. But I wasn't really interested in the fact that there had been recessions and depressions. I wanted to know if they were necessary. So finally I had to do my own research and I came to the conclusion that they were not necessary, uh, that they were monetary phenomena and that there had never been a recession or depression that was essential, that was really endemic to, uh, to what could have been. So I decided to uh, make a brave effort to try to uh, get into Parliament and do something about it. And the incentive for that, because I was only 25 years old at the time, the incentive was the fact that all the economists were saying there was going to be a depression, underlying depression, in 1950, as we had had in the 1930s. And I knew that wasn't necessary, so I thought I had to try and do something about it. So, uh, I made an effort, a very special effort, to uh, get a nomination for the Liberal Party ran in a writing that had never been liberal before uh, since Confederation, which is the only reason they would consider taking a 25-year-old who didn't know much about anything at the time. And uh, lo and behold, with odds 15 to 1 against me on election day, I got elected. And then when I got to Ottawa, I learned uh, the second lesson of, of uh, politics. The first one had been how you go about getting a nomination, a party endorsement. And the, uh, the second one was that just because you have your picture in the fr front page of the second section of the Toronto Star, the largest circulation newspaper in Canada, doesn't mean you're a somebody when you get to Ottawa. And you really can't influence uh, a policy uh, at all, let alone monetary policy and uh, financial policy. But then something happened that was, I guess, unforeseen. and. I, I talk about it with reverence because it was the outbreak of the Korean War. And of course the very bright people who are running our world uh, can always find the money to fight wars when they can't find money to uh, to win the peace. And isn't, that, provide, isn't that interesting uh, how that happens? Their education <laughs> for people. Yeah. So the depression that didn't, uh, that was supposed to happen in 1950 did not happen. And some of the pressure uh, was taken off at least for a few years 
Well, I sort of matured in the uh, in the political realm, and um, I was re-elected in 1953. Uh, interestingly enough, we just celebrated uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's uh, 60th anniversary, and my late wife and I had the pleasure of being in the Abbey when she was crowned 59 years ago. So we were very fortunate uh, in that respect, and um, then. A few years later, I was defeated uh, in a Diefenbaker sweep here, got back in uh, the following year in a by-election, they call them partial elections in the United States, and became a key member of the uh, shadow government, as they call it, on the opposition side. And then when the Pearson government was formed in uh, 1963, I was given the prestigious uh, portfolio of uh, defense because I had uh, before, uh, or a few years earlier, served as parliamentary second secretary to the Minister of Defense, and then uh, briefly as associate minister uh, in the government of Louis Saint Laurent just before the election in 1957. Now, how how do we move from this over to the area of of ufology and thing? I mean, you mentioned the shadow government, and and this is obviously a very different type of shadow government that uh, and. Uh, became aware of, of some of these more fringe areas, if I can put it that way. Why do we have to spend money? Well, that came much later. I can't have anything. When I was Minister of Defense, I did something that uh, no other minister has ever Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Oh, it's another wonderful day in paradise. Um, well, I got to the location this morning and they said the appointment was not for 1030, it was for 330. So, uh, I, I retreated to a safe place and I'm gonna go I'm gonna leave where I'm at at two o'clock because it took me about an hour to get here and just in case it takes a little bit longer to get back there only that here at two o'clock I don't know what what happened who, who dropped the ball on that one It's kind of weird. They said that it was going to be ready at the time that I got there, which didn't make sense to me. It, I, I, it seems to me um, they didn't hit you, probably didn't have the load ready and then like they try to cover their tracks. Yeah. Ten thirty eight. And if I wouldn't have left earlier, if I would have left the time that I said I was going to be rolling at this morning, I would have been really late. I don't know who... No? Home. Messaging. Maybe I didn't hold my mouth right, but I could have swear I didn't hit it. Okay, I'll, I'll resend it again. That's no big deal, but... I, maybe, maybe, you know, sometimes... The mouse doesn't track exactly where you hit your finger at either. Okay. Um, did you uh, manage to get that done? What I had asked you. Oh, no super rush. I'm just wondering. 
I did my uh, fourth quarter. Is it all done? I, I think I did that all. Yeah, I, I think I did all three parts. I'm not quite sure, but um, it's all, I went down the list and it said it was really weird because when I on the first page it said one out of five, and then I clicked on fourth quarter training and it says okay you're done. I'm like okay that was surprisingly easy, and then I went to the next page and it says oh no you have stuff to do. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're, I got time to work, come over here and get a manicure in this place and get something to eat. All right. Good to hear from you.